Mycelium Poppy here. And today we are going to discuss morels. As you know, it's the springtime in the Northeast here, and it is May 12th. This is prime morel season. This is when you should be looking at, eh, maybe it's a little late, but definitely there are still morels popping up and you're gonna see that, that that's a fact uh, in a second. So there are definitely morels in this area. I'm gonna show you them in just a bit. But what I have found is that while it's very easy to go to, for example, an apple orchard and find morels there, they're very often uh, laden with chemicals from uh, the, le the era where they were treating these trees, these apple orchards with lead arsenate. Um, and it's just not really a challenge. And part of the fun of finding morels is the challenge. And a challenge that I've set for myself is just to habitually every season find them in forests not in apple orchards that are, you know, an artificial man-made environment. And one of the environments in which I find morels most frequently outside of the apple orchard is by wet areas near tulip trees. And I'm going to show you that this is the exact environment that I just referenced. So we have like a little, like a little babbling, I don't know if it's like a brook or something, very small body of water, but you can see that there's skunk cabbage growing all over the place. You know, it's just a, like a little bridge here. I'll show you, show you what we're dealing with here. Just a little bridge, you know, nothing fancy, but a nice little area that I come to hike in every once in a while. So we're gonna show you then that this is the area where I often find morels. And what you can see here, voila, is the tulip tree. They're these long, straight trunks that don't branch, start branching until very, very high up in the trunk. And they have a distinct leaf shape, and I'm gonna show you guys that. I'm gonna try to show you guys that. But either way, let's see if we can zoom in on, on the leaf there. See if we can zoom in there. Uh, it's kind of hard to zoom in with my one hand on this. Let me see if I can. Okay, now. It's kind of hard to see the shape there, but you can see right here the shape of these tulip trees. And I'm going to intersperse some video of that so you can see it much closer. I obviously can't reach this, but... We'll zoom back out here. We have another tulip tree right here. And you can see, again, how high they go up. Okay, I'm gonna try to get, show you here. This is how high they go. They're extremely tall trees. Okay, and then if we just kind of take a walk over here real quick, we can see Couple baby morels here. They're just starting to pop out. Ugh, see if I can get them here. There goes one. One right there. Okay. We'll zoom in on that. Okay, so there's one right there. There's another one right next to it. I'll try to zoom in on that. Right there. Let's see if we can uh, change the exposure setting so you guys can see that a little bit more clearly. And there's also one way back, way back over there. Okay. So these are the environments, the micro environments, that I think are most conducive to morel hunting in the mid to late season of morel season. Oh, I just spotted another one right over here. So this tree is definitely producing some morels here. Let me see if I can zoom in on this guy. Okay, right about here. Should be able to see it in a second. Let me see. There it is, right there. Okay, so you got another one and they're just coming out of the ground. And so this is something that I always keep an eye out for. Tulip trees are precisely the environment that you want. And so we're gonna show you a little bit more of these trees here. But yeah, I mean, it's so important that we study the micro environments that these mushrooms want. I'm gonna start documenting every plant species here and I'm going to show, uh, you know, maybe I'll, 
I'll uh, email some botanists on YouTube and see how if they respond and see if maybe they can identify some of these some of these plant species here and then we'll get a picture of the tree associations and plant associations that is conducive to morel growth at least in this instance and then maybe we can start comparing it to other people's so that's how we learn um, and we're going to we're going to do that then hey guys so I'm out morel hunting it's early spring Sometimes morels pop up in really random places and you really don't know why they popped up there. And obviously, you know, with time, this is, and scientific rigor, we're gonna figure out what exactly causes these morels to grow. But as of right now, it's still up in dispute. But I am currently here in this beautiful um, tulip tree patch here. I mean, these are just massive trees. Look, look at them, look at them. They just go straight up, right? Let me show you how big some of these trees can get. Look at these guys. Look at that massive tree and how it just goes up and up and up and up. I mean, it's humongous. Here, here's another one right in front of me here is just a massive tulip tree, okay? And morels, uh, ostensibly, it is, you know, it is uh, the legend, the legend has it that morels do in fact love tulip trees. So I started seeing a lot of tulip trees around and I started looking around and look, what we found here. So we have a nice little morel. I mean, it's kind of past his prime a little bit. Let's see if we can zoom in on that guy. But yeah, nice little morel right there. And so this is something that you have to t keep into, uh, you know, keep in consideration that uh, tree associations are valid. There's something that you can use to find morels. I like to concentrate on. Um, uh, uh, ash trees, a lot of ash trees. Look, this is another absolutely humongous um, tulip tree here. And you can tell tr tulip trees because they have a very distinctive leaf shape. Uh, let's see if we can get a picture of that. Uh, oh, this is gonna be hard. But it's, it's almost like a, ah, you know what? I got some video of it at home. So I'll intersperse some of that into this video so you guys can see what it's like. But tulip trees are a really good tree to look for morels, uh, elm trees, ash trees. After a while, you get a little bored of going to apple orchards. And frankly, I'm not gonna lie to you, the apple orchards, I don't even really eat the morels from there because a lot of them are toxic. So I concentrate my efforts on these wild morels is what I like to call them. They're not, you know, artificial. They're not there because a bunch of people planted some apple and, and uh, you know, some apple orchards and, you know, they're not inundated with lead arsenic chemicals and all that. So yeah, keep in mind that um, just keep your eyes down, keep looking down. And, but as soon as you see some of these tulip trees and they're very distinctive, I mean, look at that bark, look at that bark and they could just go, they just go so high. They're like some of the tallest, straightest uh, trees. Not a lot of branches branching off of them. Look how high they go. I'll give you guys another view here. Let's see if we can kind of get under the canopy here. So let's see, look at how absolutely high these things go and they're straight. You, as you can see, it's just a nice, even, straight trunk. So keep that in mind. So when you see these tulip trees, keep your eyes peeled. You might just find some morels.